been some really key catalysts in the change in the world of freeform, particularly that have affected design. Um, there's been a real shift from packs and products and brands that have really promoted what's been substituted and what's been subtracted from packaging and from products. So promoting the no gluten, uh, no dairy, no uh, wheat. So it's very negative in that sense and how it's promoting itself. And actually there's been a real shift to more about celebrating the emotional and physical well-being that you actually have in actually consuming those products. That's also led to a real um, introduction almost of flavour, whereas previously the products have felt very dry, they felt very reassuring in that sense, and now it's actually about being drawn in by flavour and taste. And actually, and now that it's um, the world of free from, it's appealing to a much broader audience beyond those who have a condition, for example, and instead just those who want to live a healthier lifestyle. Taste and flavour is a real key driver, and how you communicate that is really important. There's been a couple of other case examples. Um, that's also driven diets, for example, so um, the world of flexitarianism, 5-2, uh, meat-free Mondays, and a great uh, example is actually Veganuary, which uh, happened this year in January, um, and actually they've had a 600% increase in their fold, and so they've had 23,000 participants take part this year, and actually eight, over 80% of those participants are going to carry on being vegans this year. There are a couple of brands I particularly would mention um, in the world of free from, um, Rude Health particularly, they've been a real key driver in leading change in design, in packaging within free from. Although founded in 20, uh, 2005, sorry, they actually had a redesign in 2013 and there was a, there was a real shift around 2013-14 um, in how brands were actually communicating through packaging design and they moved from being again that world of hempy, hippy, um, cardboard substitution, feeling like it was very worthy orientated design to being actually, they now have literally a jumping woman on pack. They've used really um, vibrant colours on pack and through the, throughout their brand and the way they talk as well, their t tone of voice is really positive. So they've moved from that world of substitution very clearly into that emotional and physical well-being. There's also um, the Coconut Collaborative, um, who were founded in 2014, who actually talk about uh, being free from dairy, but not from temptation. And what's interesting about them is they haven't felt that to promote flavour, that they've had to put ingredients, for example, on pack. They're actually, their brand personality is big enough to actually express the flavour that draws in consumers at shelf and to stand out. Because this is now a very saturated market, um, where previously you could stand alone and, um, on shelf within the free from section, there's now an entire aisle dedicated to it. So you have to be really, you have to really stand out. Um, also, Umph, who are a plant-based protein brand based in Sweden, that are now available across the Nordics. They interestingly, they have used their ingredient depiction to really drive flavour and ingredients. So although they are almost like a meat substitute, they are all about food for progress. So they are a brand with a mission. And so they, they use their photography to be really tactile, really tangible and incredibly delicious looking. So you're drawn in by flavour first and then you find out about the purpose and the mission and the brand itself. There are three key ways that brands should really be thinking and behaving now, particularly in regards to design and also their brand positioning. Um, not only is, well, firstly, brand personality. That's really, really key. In being able to stand out in a really saturated aisle now, you're competing against other new entrance, uh, new entrance brands, but also uh, to private label, who are very quick and very agile to be able to mimic design. So you need to have a really ownable brand personality that not only motivates your um, consumer, um, within the free from world, but also encourages them. So you need to talk to them and almost create um, like a cult standing in a way. The Coconut Collaborative are really interesting in that they talk about the coconutters. So you feel like you're joining the club. So you feel, you feel special by consuming their products. Secondly, flavour. Whereas previously, free from world was very much about the substitution, actually it's about promoting the flavour first because people who want this healthier lifestyle, whether they, whether they have to through um, an illness or whether they want to because they want a healthier lifestyle, they really are going to be drawn in by flavour first and foremost. Yes, claims are still important, but there's other intelligent and clever ways you can incorporate those as part of your design. And then uh, finally, it's about promoting the emotional and physical well-being that that product really instills within you. So actually think about how your consumer is going to feel and what their lifestyle, how it's, their lifestyle is going to be benefited by having your brand as part of their lifestyle. 
there are a few um, products which are starting to emerge in the world of free from, and obviously that's always evolving. Like, the, like when we talk about superfoods, there's always going to be new products on the market. But what's starting to appear at the moment is uh, things like camel milk, for example, whereas we previously had the coconut milk, the soya milk, the almond milk. You think you're looking to other animals, for example, to look for these, um, these sources of milks. Um, also, other protein sources, so things like bugs, insects, crickets, those are starting to be sourced from around the world, so particularly Australia, that's already established as a, as a category. And so we're starting to see that ac across uh, the USA and Europe as well. Um, and then also we're starting to see things like turmeric, which is looking to almost like ancient wisdom and ancient knowledge that we've almost forgotten about and actually thinking about the more holistic benefits that these products can provide for our bodies and our emotional well-being. Um, and then also things like algae and seaweed, so looking to the sea and other sources of nature to actually fi find these products that can make us feel great while having to uh, accommodate for a free-from lifestyle. Mm -hmm.